The P-2 Neptune is one of the beautiful and unforgettable aircraft of the first Cold War. It played essential roles in keeping the communist navies under observation for the western world and was behind the scenes in the historical events of some naval battles. Today we are investigating the P-2, the flying watchtower over the seas. The P-2 Neptune performed critical maritime patrol and reconnaissance missions during the First Cold War. Between 1947 and 1996, more than 1,000 of them fulfilled their duties over the seas successfully. The story of the P-2 goes back to the Second World War. In 1941, Vega, the subsidiary of Lockheed, began to design a new land-based maritime patrol bomber. However, since the existing aircraft were sufficient for this task, Washington did not allocate enough resources for the development efforts. So, the new aircraft, called the P-2V, made its maiden flight on May 17, 1945. Production began in 1946 and it became operational two years later. The Neptune was in constant development. In later versions, the engine power, which was 2,300 horsepower in the first production model, was increased to 2,800 and 3,200 respectively. The P2V4 version initially had the 3,200 horsepower R3350 26WAs, while the latest production models were equipped with the 3,250 horsepower R3350 30W turbo compound engines. This model had better anti-submarine warfare capability. It was renamed as P2D in 1962. Besides, this model had a search radar, provision for dropping sono boys and underwing tip tanks. The P2 V5 had new, larger and jettisonable tip tanks, the AN APS-8 radar in the nose of the port tip tank and the AN APS-20 search radar under the fuselage. Later aircraft featured a glazed observation nose and a magnetic anomaly detector shortly manned. With 424 units, the P-2V5 became the most produced model of the Neptune. The Royal Air Force and the Brazilian Air Force designated their P-2V5s as the Neptune MR1 and P-15 respectively. Beginning with the P-2V5F model, the Neptune became one of the first operational aircraft fitted with both piston and jet engines. It was renamed as P-2E in 1962. Generally, these two jet engines were run at full power to take off and then shut down upon reaching a safe altitude. They were also started and kept running at flight idle during low altitudes as a safety measure should one of the radial engines develop problems. The P-2V6 had a smaller radar, lengthened weapons bay and provision for aerial mine laying and photo reconnaissance equipment. It was renamed as P-2F in 1962. The P-2V6B was developed to carry two AUM M2 Petrel anti-ship missiles whose payload was a passive acoustic homing torpedo. However, since the US Navy found the weapon ineffective, only 16 aircraft were ever produced. The P-2V7 was the second most produced Neptune model with 287 units. The US Navy changed the aircraft's designation to P-2H in 1962. The Royal Canadian Air Force designated its P-2V7s as the CP-122. Initially, these aircraft did not have jet pods, which were subsequently retrofitted. There were also modified P-2 variants for special missions. For example, Lockheed developed the P-2V-3C as a carrier-based nuclear bomber. This heavy aircraft used jet-assisted takeoff rocket boosters for short takeoff. Yet, P-2V-3C could not land on a carrier. Another modified Neptune, the Truculent Turtle, flew non-stop from Perth, Australia to Ohio, USA in 1946 without air refueling. The flight of 18,083.6 kilometers lasted 55 hours and 18 minutes. The Truculent Turtle had held the longest flight record until a B-52 broke it in 1962. During the Vietnam War, 
the USA converted four Neptunes for night and all-weather ground attack missions. This model was called AP-2H. For CIA covert operations, seven Neptune-based RB-69As were produced. The DP-2E and H versions performed drone launch missions. The unarmed TP-12 was for pilot training. The LP-2J had real ski landing gear and jet-assisted takeoff rocket boosters for Antarctic operations. The EP-2H was fitted with UHF telemetry equipment. Twelve Neptunes were modified for sensor deployment over Southeast Asia. This variant, designated as OP-3E, had a terrain avoidance radar in the nose, chaff dispensers, wing-mounted gun pods and waste guns. Also, the Japanese Kawasaki company developed the P-2J variant for the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force as an alternative to the P-3 Orion. This model had two 2,850 horsepower T-64 IHI-10 turboprop engines and two 13.7 kN J-3 IHI-7 C booster turbojets. The P-2J could reach a top speed of 650 km per hour. Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Canada, France, Japan, the Netherlands, Portugal, Taiwan, the UK and the USA were users of the P-2. The P-2H variant had a 7 to 9 person crew. The aircraft had a length of 27.94 meters, a wingspan of 31.65 meters and a height of 8.94 meters. Its wing area was 93 square meters. The P-2H had an empty weight of 22,650 kilograms and a maximum takeoff weight of 36,240 kilograms. Two 3,700 horsepower Wright R3350 32W Cyclone turbo compound radial engines and two 15 kilonewton Westinghouse J34WE34 turbojets provided a top speed of nearly 590 km per hour. The cruise speed of the aircraft was 333 km per hour. Its range was 3,471 km. The P2H could climb to an altitude of 6,800 meters, in other words, 22,400 feet. It could carry over 3.5 tons of ordnance, including rockets, freefall bombs, depth charges, and torpedoes. Different models of the P2 had 12.7mm machine guns or 20mm guns, which were housed in the turrets. Besides, there were 20mm fixed nose guns on some versions. According to US Navy doctrine, the P2 performed the hunter roles in a hunter-killer group where the destroyers were employed as killers. From this perspective, it was not an actual offensive system. The P2 started its career as a maritime patrol aircraft but it was baptized with fire as a bomber. When North Korea attacked South Korea on June 25, 1950, the USA did not have enough combat aircraft in the region. That's why the Neptunes stationed in Japan performed bombing missions against North Korean troops in the early days of the war. Even though they soon returned to their original duties, life was not easy for the Neptunes in the early stages of the First Cold War. In 1951, the Soviet LA-11 fighters shot down one US P-2V over international waters of Vladivostok. One year later, the Soviet MiG intercepted an early warning model of P-2V-3W which flew over Kamchatka. This time, the Russian acted cold-blooded and did not open fire on the aircraft. In 1953, the Chinese anti-aircraft guns shot down a US P-2V near Shantou in the Formosa Straits. Although it was addressed as an accident in the US sources, the Russian sources claimed that a P-2V-5 was shut down in the Yellow Sea near Dairen on January 4, 1954. At the end of the same year, a Neptune, which took off from Japan, ditched into the sea due to the fire of the Soviet MiG-17s. The Soviet fighters also shut down four additional US P-2s between 1954 and 1956. In 1964, a Chinese MiG-15 shut down an RB-69A which flew over mainland China. The US Army operated the OP-2Es over Vietnam to particularly observe the Ho Chi Minh Trail 
a logistical system that ran from North Vietnam to South Vietnam through Laos and Cambodia. A P-2 of the Argentine Navy conducted the first reconnaissance mission over the Falkland Islands in 1961. During the Operation Soberania, the Argentine invasion plan of Chile, these aircraft monitored the Chilean naval activities. In 1982, the P-2s once more performed reconnaissance missions over the Falklands and collected valuable information for the Argentine invasion. One of these Neptunes played a crucial role in the Falklands War on May 2, 1982. Its AN-ALR-8 receiver detected D-band emissions of the Type 965 radar belonging to HMS Sheffield. However, later the aircraft experienced a radar malfunction. After the crew's hard work, the radar became operational again and the P-2 determined the exact position of the British destroyer. With this information, Argentine Super Retendals hit HMS Sheffield with Exocet missiles. Brazil acquired 14 P-2s from the UK in 1958. After being refurbished in the USA, these aircraft took off from this country and headed for the Salvador Air Base. Two P-51 Mustangs and a de Havilland Vampire of the Air Force of the Dominican Republic intercepted one of these Neptunes. The Dominicans forced the aircraft to land at the air base at San Isidro by opening fire. After the investigation, the Brazilian P-2 was allowed to continue on its flight. In 1972, the Soviet Union sent the space control monitoring ship Kismanov Yuri Gagarin to Bahira the Infern Launch Center to collect information about the Brazilian rocket launch program. After the Brazilian P-2 spotted the ship, she had to leave the area. During the Algerian War, the French Neptunes monitored the western Mediterranean and laid mines off the coast of Algeria. In 1976, near Sakhalin Island, an Su-15 intercepted a P-2J of the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force. The Soviet aircraft also fired two air-to-air -air missiles, which luckily missed their targets. In 1962, the Indonesian naval commandos attempted to infiltrate Dutch New Guinea. But the Dutch intelligence discovered this plan. So, the Netherlands Naval Aviation Service sent the P-2s to the area to intercept three Indonesian boats. These boats opened fire on the aircraft and after that, the Dutch destroyer HNLMS Evertsen responded and sank one of them. The other two had to leave the scene. Also, on May 17, 1962, a Dutch Neptune shot down an Indonesian C-47 transport aircraft. During the colonial independence wars, the Portuguese Air Force used its P-2s for bombing missions over Angola and Guinea-Bissau. China shut down three Taiwanese RB-69As between 1961 and 1964. The P-2 performed its heroic missions on many fronts of the First Cold War. Many aircraft were lost due to the intense use in dangerous areas. However, the Neptune managed to make more gains than losses. He would probably be able to fly in the sky much longer if the more efficient turboprops did not replace the radial engines. Still, as in the Falklands War, it has proven its worth until the last moment. A few P-2s still fly in Australia and the USA, making the fans of this beautiful and legendary aircraft happy. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.